It's Tuesday, July 24th. Welcome to Pastor Bob Daily. A Facebook friend said, Can sinful actions and sins of omission lead to a weakening to our faith and in the end make us fall from grace? Great question. And let me explain what's meant here. You know what sinful actions are, but sins of omission is a term that basically comes from the Catholic Church, and it means uh, not doing those things that you have an opportunity to do. Uh, Good works, uh, correcting something, whatever it might be, when you simply don't do something that you should do, it's called a sin of omission. Uh, That's a real general um, interpretation, but that's basically what it means. And he's asking here, will it lead to a weakening of our faith and make us fall from grace? Well, the first place we ought to start is to define grace. And here's the good news today. Grace has nothing to do with you (laughs) and everything to do with God. When Jesus died on the cross, he put an end to sin. Sin is no longer a barrier, but he didn't stop there. He said, I'm giving you my grace now. In other words, it's my unmerited favor. It, you don't have to pay for it. There's nothing you can do for it. It's a gift that I'm giving to you. And it's a free gift upon salvation. No strings attached. So can we fall from grace? Well, it's a gift. You see, and if you have nothing to do with it, it's from God. Now, sins of omission, that's a difficult one. Because folks, all day long, there are opportunities, things you can do. And you know, I used to feel guilty if I couldn't do every single one of them. And some of them, it's simply a matter of time constraint. I don't have enough time in the day to do everything. And there's so many things, so many people that you could touch, that you could be involved with, so many things you could correct, so many things you that, that, that you could um, uh, possibly change the course of events with, but there's 24 hours in a day and you have to sleep sometime. You know, I used to be really guilt-ridden in this area, and I'm just being very honest with you. There was a long period of time when I only slept four hours a night. Seriously. I read that Albert Einstein only slept four hours a night. I don't even know if that's true anymore. I should probably Google that. But I I read that he only slept four hours a night and he was fine with it. And I thought, if he can do it, I can do it. And I slept about four hours a night. I worked pretty much all the rest of the time. No vacations, no days off. I did that for many years. Uh, Some of my health problems today, I firmly believe, are part of that. uh, Because sleep is so important. And by the way, I'm going to do a podcast on sleep one day. Because I just think it's real important. It takes 8 hours and 14 minutes for your body to completely run through all of your sleep cycles. And if nothing else in your life, you ought to be doing that. Makes you a lot healthier, a lot more mentally alert. A lot of great things. But anyway... We'll do that one day. But, you know, there isn't enough hours in the day, and and I worked so hard because I felt guilty if I didn't do things, honestly. And I realized a lot of that was guilt-driven. Now, I didn't know it then. And, uh, of course, those were the early days of sanctuary. Those are the early days of putting things together and kind of building things that, uh, that were significant. But I paid a great price in doing it without sleep. And and a lot of it because of guilt. There were so many things to do and I couldn't say no to anything. Well, these days I'm learning a lot more how to say no. And we all have to learn that lesson. You can be guilt-ridden with sins of omission and never stop. And then there are sinful actions that he talks about here. And, you know, we've talked about this many times in the podcast, but... That's the reason that Jesus died. To forgive us our sin, past, present, and future, it's gone. 
And this is the great work that Jesus Christ did on the cross. You know, so fall from grace, weakening your faith. Well, there's a lot of things that weaken our faith, but you know what one of the number one things that weaken our faith is? Guilt. Not necessarily the sin of omission, but the guilt that comes with it. Man, that weakens our faith many times. Thinking that God has expectations of us that we can't live up to, and it totally affects our faith and weakens it. You know, folks, today is a good day to concentrate on grace. God's unmerited favor to you, his gift to you that is so great. So today, celebrate your grace. God bless you. Have a great day.